Welcome everybody. Happy Sabbath. It's nice to see everybody's faces and some of the people I've never seen. Welcome. Um, you had to forgive me for this scruffy face. I realized that the No Shave November was just almost gone before I latched on to it. And um, I guess I'll have a beard for winter because I don't like cold weather. Um, I don't hunt anymore, so I don't really need it, but it, it is, does make a difference because when you have a beard through the winter time and you take it off, you can feel that air, let me tell you. Anyways, um, I, I want you to turn your hymnals back to 316, this song that we just sang. And, you know, so many churches are getting away from the old hymnals. And they're going to this, you know, this modern day repetition of words. And I, I am blown away. When, I, when we were singing this song, there was parts of this song that I, I just couldn't even speak the words. It hit me so hard. And, and just, I, I just want to read this out loud together here. If we just look and live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of Kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. Is that not huge? Hello. Live out thy life within me, in all things have thy way. I, the transparent medium, thy glory to display. What does that mean? Yeah. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of man? Okay, but God made man a temple. We are, you know, we are temples, and He wants to dwell in that temple. And and let me tell you, um, Tiago gave a good speech about, you know, giving God what's rightfully His. Listen, brothers and sisters, God pays wonderful dividends. Amen. Okay, better dividends you're going to get in this planet. Trust me, I got some stock. The dividends aren't that great. You know, and some of that money just like, I wonder if we're, I might as well just go buy a lottery card rather than be in the stock market. You know, um, I'm joking, of course. But think about this for a minute. I mean, take the illustration and I'm still getting used to some new glasses, so forgive me if I look like I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, take the bush, the burning bush, right? Moses is speaking to this bush. He first he looks at this bush and he's like, what's going on here? This bush isn't consumed and it's still on fire, right? And he goes over to the bush and the bush speaks, right? Take off thy shoes, for you're standing on holy ground. Why was it holy ground? Because God was present, right? But think about this, this little bush. You ever put fire to a bush? It's consumed, right? Gone. Gone. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah, think about the beautiful of this, this is the picture of God. He's not taking. He comes in. He takes nothing away. But gives everything. There's no smell of smoke. Nothing's burnt. Everything is fine. But you know, He, he has to have total control. He wants it all or nothing. All of the heart. Right? All of the heart. And we, with our natures, I can only speak for myself, but I don't like giving up. I don't like giving in. I didn't like losing the ball games the other night. Had some friends come to see them, and we just didn't get it pulled off. But, uh, anyways, verse 2. The temple has been yielded. What temple? 
us. Hello, this is speaking. This, this is why this is so powerful. This drill down in this. And purified of sin. Let thy Shekinah glory now shine forth from within. What is this world waiting for? Hello? What do they need to see? Yeah. That's the only thing that's going to be the difference between all the darkness that's out there. Listen, and how beautiful it would be set up against darkness. You know, if you go look at a diamond, you go to a diamond store, what do you think they're going to set that diamond up against? Black velvet, baby. And it's going to shine, right? <sighs> Let's continue on. And all the earth keeps silence. The body henceforth be. Thy silent, gentle servant moved only as by thee. Ooh. What did, did Jesus do anything in and of his own will? No. Nothing. Wow. Think about this. When, you, when, you're, when you're reading out this song, you know, the way, the truth, and the life... John 14, 6, this is the example right here. This is what Jesus did. Every place he went was a divine appointment. He didn't have to wonder where he was going or what was happening. He knew. Have you ever had that feeling or something where you just knew something that you didn't know? How do you think you knew that? You think the Holy Spirit works inside of you guys? Do you think that He wants more of you? This is the problem. The Holy Spirit, the Bible proves to us that He has given Himself to us. The problem is not that. The problem is how much of us have we given to Him. That's where the work gets done. Because He can do it all. The Bible says, I can do nothing, right, in and of myself, without Jesus, we're finished. We can't make it. There's no hope. The, the, the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. Does that mean there's anything we can do to fix it and mend it? No. It says it must die. Die. And in God's economy, death is life. Right? Everything in this planet is turned the other way. It's all upside down. This world is like a bad dream. It's a sick joke. Anyways. Let's move up to verse 3 at the top. Its members every moment held subject to thy call, ready to have thee use them or not be used at all. Held without restless longing or strain or stress or fret or chafings at thy dealings, or thoughts of vain regret. This is powerful stuff. And I don't know, Samuel Wesley up here in the top, is he Charles Wesley, brother, cousin, something? I have no idea. But restful, calm, and pliant, from bend and bias free. How in the world can you be bias free without Jesus Christ? Tell me that. Nobody can. Nobody can. Awaiting thy decision when thou hast need of me, live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou the glorious answer to all my questionings. I don't know 
how anybody can decide to get rid of these kind of hymns. That is so powerful. So and and look how strong that is. One, just four verses. Four verses. And and while we were singing it, I couldn't even sing some of the words. It hit me so hard, my mouth opened, and it, nothing came out. <laughs> Anyways. The title of our little talk today is Infinite Purity. Infinite Purity. Who is it that has infinite purity? Jesus. Jesus. Galatians is a very powerful book. It's got a lot of power in there, a lot of punch. Uh, I'd like you to go to the Genesis, or I mean, get Genesis, Galatians 4 4. And it says, But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. When the fullness of time was come, what, is, what does that mean? The fullness of time was come. <coughs> Pardon me? God was ready. Anybody else? Yes. The 69 weeks, yeah. God has a plan, doesn't he? God has a perfect plan. And it will be executed right on time because it says right there, when the fullness of time, right? So do, do y'all think that um, possibly the devil planned stuff out too? Do you think that he might um, try to do battle in a way... I mean, he can't see what God can see, but he certainly must be pretty intelligent. He's been alive for a long time. And he's pretty angry. And uh, he's planning his to, to be raised up because he wants to be worshipped, right? Because he thinks he can be like God, as the Bible says. You know, I'm amazed on how good Christian people think that they don't believe in real evil. Real evil that's alive in the world. Hello? I was just looking at a... Well, here. I bet I can find it real quickly. Um, just a second. I go into my gallery here. So there was a a magazine that was put out about 12 years ago, right? It's called The Economist, is the name of the magazine. And um, the front cover said, A Rough Guide to Hell. Okay? There's all kinds of things on the front of this picture. Okay, and I'm not going to get into all kinds of stuff, but there is, um, I'm just going to point out one thing in here. So there's a guy that's coming in on a parasail, right, with guns, and it says on his banner, Hamas, right? And guess who he's attacking? Israel, right? And guess who is the symbol and face of Israel? Benjamin Netanyahu. This magazine was a cover of The Economist 12 years ago. Okay, 12 years ago. Okay, I, I know you guys have heard that, I'm sure you probably don't watch The Simpsons, because it's a bunch of garbage. But there has been many things. I mean, I, the devil, I think, you know what my personal opinion is here? Now, I cannot prove this from the Bible, but... Um, I think that the devil has to tip his hand as well as God tips his hand. The question is, are the people listening? Are the people listening? 
I can't prove that from the Bible, but there's so much there. It's like they rub your face in it. Look, this is what we're going to do. And there's nothing you can do about it. And sure enough, it happens. You know, so what is it? What is the Christian world to do? Sit back and be silent as the world goes nuts and just bide our time? Or should we get noisy? What happens? You know, there's the old story. Well, they carried him away. And then they carried her away. Right? And then what happens? They come carry you away. All that evil needs to, to succeed is good men to do nothing. Nothing. I wonder, I wonder where we're at and what we're doing. But I'm thankful that Jesus has made it all possible that we can have everything on this planet. Heaven can be <coughs> here. If you have the Holy Spirit, and even if they drag you off to a prison, you can be in heaven. Paul was. Didn't he write some of the Bible chained to the bottom of a basement prison? <clears throat> but you know, there's a problem. Because the principle that man can save himself by his own works lays at the foundation of every heathen religion. Okay? Hence, man has no barrier against sin. Period. How many religions are there out there? Ooh. world's full of them. Full of them. <laughs> the heart, as the Bible said, is desperately wicked. There's a mechanic that was working on a doctor's car. And... Um, He's tearing apart the whole engine. And he's going through this thing, you know, having to really spend some time and get it done. And He's thinking about how much money this doctor makes, you know, and he's just getting angry about it while he's fixing this thing because he gets all done rebuilding this engine and he talks with the doctor that comes in and he says, look, he says, I don't get it. He says, I just spent five days rebuilding your engine and I only get $3,500. You know, and uh, he says, "How come? How come you make so much money? How come you do an operation, you get three hundred fifty thousand dollars? We'll just say, right?" And the doctor sits there and he looks at him for a little bit and he says, "Yeah." He says, "You you did a real good job. I appreciate that." He says, "But the only difference between you and me is when I operate on something, it's still running." God can run, can work on an operating heart. Okay? The devil wants to kill your heart. He wants to kill you dead. God wants to give us life. But the only way we can do this is by giving him everything. All right, I want you to turn to Galatians in chapter 3. Verse 8, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through what? Faith. faith. What faith? Whose faith? Jesus' Jesus's faith is the only saving faith, right? Okay. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee all the nations be blessed. All the nations through Abraham, right? So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So if you're going to live by the law, you got to hit every note, right? You can't miss a note. 
Doesn't God expect absolute perfection? He does. Did He provide that for you? In Jesus Christ. Period. The way, the truth, and the life. No one is to ever apologize for that because there is no other. There is none other that moved. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. How has he made a curse for us? He took it all to Calvary, didn't he? God put on human flesh, this equipment that we all carry. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, verse 13, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, Spirit through faith. In verse 15, Brother, and I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth there too. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means a will and a testament that's ratified, right? When someone dies, it cannot be changed, correct? You cannot change it. So how in the world, how in the world did Sabbath become Sunday? Because Jesus didn't change it. I wonder what people do with that verse. Let's go with the next verse. Now to Abraham and his seed where the promise is made. And he saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Whoo! What about that verse? What if the whole world truly believed that verse? Think about what's going on over there in the Middle East right now. Right? Everything that's happening over there. And with that thought in your head, I want to read this verse again. Because they all claim Abraham is their father, don't they? Hello? Do they not claim Abraham? Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. Wow. Think about that. If people knew and believed that verse, wars would not be happening right now. Wars would not be... A simple few words of truth. Think about it. You know, I, I, I don't believe in modern medicine in the way that they just, I think they're pill pushers, okay? I think they do a very good job of fixing bones that are broken and stuff like that, but I'm not into the medical industrial complex. I think we've lost a lot of healing the old ways. You know, it's so amazing that, you know, birds chirp in the morning and there's certain noises wake up the plants so that they can do photosynthesis. I, I, you know, you can take a, a woman that can hit a high note, she can break a piece of glass, right? It, cancer, all everything that's evil in this world will bow to the right frequency. And in God's voice is the right frequency for all healing. When He speaks healing, it's healed from head to toe, front to back. And I'm not talking just physical. I'm talking everything, spiritually. We need the way, the truth, and the life. We need Him desperately on this planet because, you know, 
in the fullness of time. Think about that. In the fullness of time, God came on the scene. Jesus Christ, in the fullness of time, stayed the tide. Think about how, how diluted the planet was. The first time round, okay, the antediluvian people, and, and you know, they, we think that we're so great. We think that we got it all going on, that we're so intelligent, you know, because we have computers and everything. Well, you know, our ancestors were huge people. Adam and Eve, our great grandmother and grandfather, were intelligent and strong. And they use their all their whole mind, unlike us, that they say we use what like ten percent, right? And we're supposed to be proud and all this. We're little wimps. We're puny little people. But they had so much. And here we are thinking that we got something because we have all these things. But look, they came to a point, as great as they were. The heart was still, as the Bible says, desperately wicked, right? So they came to the point 2,000 years down the road from creation where God had to flood the earth, right? He flooded the earth. So we come. What do you think the other worlds and the angels and everything thought about that? What do you do? Don't you think they were a little freaked out watching all that happen? Wouldn't you be? Right? So we come from that 2,000 years from the flood. The world's back in the same position. Right? What do you think the other worlds and the angels are looking at this planet thinking is about ready to happen? They're thinking that God is going to just do away with it all. As like Pastor Ricky says, put the game back in the box. You know? But listen. What happened? Jesus came on the scene. He became a man. He stayed the tide of all this evil and He took every sin, past, present, and future to the cross. To the cross. The Bible says them 12 men flip the world upside down. And what do you think? What do you think that the angels and the other worlds thought? I mean, they had to be, you know, you know how you are watching a movie, you see? Well, we are the movie, brothers and sisters, for the whole universe. And they had to be ready for something to come. And I bet they saw what they didn't believe was Jesus taken on flesh, staying the tide of evil when the whole place could have been done away with. But you guess what? The Bible says when the fullness of time has come, right? Now, where are we from the cross? 2,000 years, brothers and sisters. The world is getting really ugly, really bad. The fullness of time is here again. And when Jesus comes again, He's not coming to be spit on. He's not coming to be having His beard pulled. He's coming as the King of Kings. He's taken off them priestly robes. You see, because Jesus has always been a king. He's never stopped being a king. But he took off his kingly robes so that he could become a priest and a servant and put on flesh. He came here and did what we could never do so that there could be salvation for each and every one of us that we could live forever with God because of Him. But when He comes again, there isn't going to be all this stuff that so many people talk about. There's going to be more time. There's going to be seven more years. All this garbage. When He comes, brothers and sisters, it's done. 
it's over. He says in the book of Revelation that I come and my reward is with me. How can his reward be with him if it isn't finished? Amen. It's finished when he comes. Amen. You can't take one scripture and twist it all around to make it say what you want it to say. The Bible says you have to take here a little, there.